next guy is Lun Wang. His website is out, so I had to do proof of work to find him. <laughs> He's a PhD student uh, here at Berkeley, and he's going to talk about SERP, another protocol that uses asymmetric bivariate polynomials. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a second year PhD student working with Professor Donaldson at UC Berkeley. So today I will talk about our new project, uh, which is a dynamic committed proactive secret sharing scheme, uh, namely CHIRP. And this is a joint work with uh, Canal University. So uh, first, let's go through some uh, motivation. Uh, so decentralization is widely seen as a very important step in the democratization of resources. Uh, so this is uh, strongly facilitated by the rise of blockchain systems in the past decade. Um, so these blockchain systems, systems are used in uh, various applications. So the most well-known application is cryptocurrency. Uh, some other sensitive applications include um, uh, identity management and voting system. Uh, so a common thread across all the applications is the requirement that uh, the users need to maintain their own uh, private key. And uh, this is not easy because uh, it is reported that uh, 12 billion of cryptocurrency is lost because of lost keys. So uh, people turn to an alternative that they turn to store their keys with centralized entities such as Coinbase. But this kind of centralization of keys actually undermines the very decentralized nature that defines blockchain system. So our idea is that why not we like decentralize our keys like other resources? <coughs> so uh, the high level idea is we want to use secret sharing techniques to distribute the private key. So although our original intention is to uh, secret share the keys, uh, our protocol actually can be used in many other applications uh, such as private smart contracts, uh, manage encrypted documents and uh, threshold credential insurance. Uh, so first, let's uh, take a brief look at uh, secret sharing, which we have already gone through uh, in the previous slide. But uh, yeah, so a secret sharing scheme is actually composed of two algorithms, a share algorithm and a recover algorithm. So uh, given a secret, the share algorithm outputs uh, the secret shares and uh, the recover algorithm input all the secret shares and output the secret. So the two algorithms need to satisfy uh, two requirements. So the first one is correctness, that the uh, secret recovered from secret shares should be the same as your original secret, right? And uh, the security requirements requires that um, given less than T secret shares, it's impossible for any people to <coughs> distinguish um, two secret shares of two different secrets. And this indicates that uh, the secret share schemes actually ha is a threshold uh, protocol. Uh, you need at least T of the secret shares to recover the original secret. So maybe the most widely used secret sharing scheme is Shamir secret sharing. So the high level idea is um, uh, you set the constant uh, term of a polynomial as your secret and uh, you evaluate the polynomial on some other points and you use these points as uh, your secret shares. So when you want to recover the secret, you just interpolate uh, T uh, points and uh, uh, recover the polynomial and then evaluate on zero to get your constant term, which is your secret. So the threshold uh, of, the, of Shamir's secret sharing is the degree of the polynomial plus one. In what way you are going to be different than what uh, Tal uh, talked about, your aim, what is, uh, she talked about the problem of keeping the, keeping, recovering your, your secret. 
And you are posing the same problem. In what, so in what way you are going to diverge from what uh, you did? Uh, actually, I missed the previous talk uh, part of it, so I'm not sure. Like, okay. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess there's some uh, difference. So, uh, <laughs> okay, I, I, will, I will try to look at the video of the previous slides and see if there's any difference. So, um, um, so very intuitive. Okay, I'm sorry to stop you. Okay. It's a story. Okay. okay, Dalia, you have to extend this time later. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shai uh, Levy had his first paper with crypto with Silvio. And the night before the talk, uh, Joe Killian come up, came up to him and said, you know, the result that you have uh, Damgaard had it a few years ago, even at crypto and so on. Shai and Silvio didn't know. Shai was devastated. He was a first few years grad student. He calls up Silvio. I mean, Silvio is the master of everything, okay? <laughs> Shai starts the talk the following day. Good ideas are worth repeating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks so much for the explanation. I like it. Uh, yeah, but I still believe there's some difference. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, a very intuitive uh, solution will be to uh, directly apply <laughs> Shamir secret sharing in the key management scenario. Um, so in this scenario, private key is shared to multiple parties using uh, Shamir secret sharing. And uh, you need at least um, T plus one parties to cover it to recover the secret. So um, this system um, provides two properties, which is very good. The first one is security, is that uh, the adversary needs to compromise enough parties to steal the secret. And availability means um, the user is always able to fetch his own key when he wants, because the adversary also needs to compromise n minus t parties to prevent the user from getting her own key. So the n is the number of uh, the parties uh, in the committee. Uh, however, uh, here is a problem because actually these two properties is based on an assumption that the adversary cannot compromise enough parties in uh, a committee in infinite time period because we never update the secret shares. Uh, however, this is not true in many scenarios. Uh, for example, if uh, there's some vulnerability in uh, all the servers of all the parties and the uh, adversary is able to compromise uh, these servers in a constant rate, then uh, this will break the assumption and the system is no longer secure. So in order to address this issue, uh, people propose proactive secret sharing. Uh, so it is defined based on the uh, conventional uh, secret sharing scheme. Uh, the difference is uh, these schemes uh, periodically refresh the secret. So there are two kinds of proactive secret sharing. The first one is a static, which means we only update the shares, but do not change the members of the committees. Uh, and the other one is called dynamic proactive secret sharing, which means we uh, change the committee and the shares. Um, so the assumption in the dynamic proactive secret sharing is actually changed to uh, the adversary cannot compromise enough parties in a fixed time period, which is uh, much more practical. Um, So uh, with this intuition in hand, we choose to design Chirp in a proactive, dynamic, secret sharing uh, flavor. And uh, this is a common workflow of dynamic, proactive, secret sharing. Did you define communication model yet, right? Oh, so the... Co a synchronous, synchronous communication model partial. Yeah, so we assume a, a synchronized uh, communication chan uh, channel that every message sent will be received within a certain time period. Uh, and there is some research going on to try to extend Chirp to some uh, synchronized uh, channel, uh, but it's yeah, at a very uh, young period. So uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so the common workflow is first you need some uh, setup and the share phase, uh, like uh, uh, some decentralized key generation protocol, or uh, the user can just uh, uh, compute the secret shares at his own computer and send to the uh, parties you want to share in a secure channel like a TLS channel. Um, so the assumption here is the same as the previous uh, slide that the adversary can only compromise up to T minus one parties in the committee in one epoch. But uh, one common challenge when you try to design a dynamic proactive secret sharing scheme is um, 
when you try to update the committee members, you need to um, hand off the secret shares to the new committee. And in this phase, actually, there are two committees. Uh, one old committee, one new committee, uh, they simultaneously uh, exist. And according to the assumption, the adversary can compromise t minus one parties in each of them, which is two t minus one in total. And this actually uh, exceeds the threshold. And this means uh, the adversary may be able to uh, steal or destroy the secret in this handoff phase. So whenever you design a dynamic practice sharing, you always need to uh, find a way to like go through this problem. So in chirp, what um, what we use is uh, a Bavarian polynomial and a technique called dimension switch to uh, avoid this problem. So, um, so yeah, you ask, can you go back to previous? Okay. Yeah. So there, when the handoff is happening, is your protocol live or uh, not live? Uh, uh, when the handoff is happening, uh, do you, oh, can I yeah, or I yeah, because the old committee is still there. Uh, you submit a request, the old committee can always like uh, give you the secret shares they have. So during the handoff phase, uh, the whole thing is still alive. Yeah, but during that period, it's vulnerable. So that's what we want to uh, solve. So, again, so are you assuming that the, the communication between the processors are, are, is, is authenticated? Oh. Uh, so actually, we abstract that part and assume there's some secure channel between uh, each node, b between each pair of the nodes. Uh, but, but, but then if nodes get corrupted, that's something that it's really hard to, uh, to, to be set up again. Uh, yeah, so actually... Um, impersonate it, they can impersonate you forever. Yeah, that's a very good question. So actually, we have a scheme to use blockchain system as a P2P a communication channel in, described in our paper. So the high level idea is that, uh, so when you uh, submit a transaction in the blockchain uh, system, uh, it will be first be stored in uh, some memory pool. And uh, uh, if you, w when it's not accepted, uh, you can always rewrite it. So using this property, you can always uh, send a transaction to override the previous one and send another to uh, overwrite the second one. And uh, using this thing, you can actually um, uh, transfer a very large message using the existing blockchain system. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So our solution to, uh, to solve this problem is to use bivariate polynomial and the dimension switch. So, um, so uh, the good thing about bivariate polynomial uh, is if you uh, still see the constant term as a secret, then actually there are two ways that you can share the secret. So the first way is you can fix y equals zero and do Shamir secret sharing along the x axis. And you can al also fix axis, x equals zero and share it along the y axis. And because the highest uh, degree of x and y can be different, so uh, the threshold of the secret sharing is also different. So if we can find a way to switch between X and Y, then we are actually uh, switching between two secret sharing schemes that have different threshold. Uh, and uh, the good thing about this is uh, because if we have such a scheme, then actually we can uh, switch to a higher threshold uh, uh, secret sharing scheme before the handoff phase and switch back after the handoff phase. And that will solve the problem. So. Uh, Let's see how we can actually do this. Uh, it's very, uh, yeah. So, so, so let's use a grid um, to represent a bivariate polynomial. Uh, and uh, this line is the uh, y-axis. And uh, uh, the vertical line is the x-axis, which is a kind of uh, anti-intuitive, but it's fine. Uh, and uh, let's say we use a 2-3 polynomial, which means one threshold is 3 and another threshold is 4. So uh, when we are not in the handoff phase, uh, so each party in the committee actually hold four points along the y-axis, which means it's a, a three threshold secret sharing. And, uh, oh, it's not a three threshold secret sharing. So, uh, oh yeah, it's a three threshold secret sharing. 
And uh, when we want to do a handoff, um, the, old, the parties of the old committee will sh uh, send its secret share to the new committee, uh, but rearrange the ownership of the uh, secret shares in this way. So the new committee will hold secret shares along the x-axis. Uh, and because the degree of x-axis is 2, then it's actually um, actually a false secret sharing. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I didn't make a mistake. So by this way, we implement uh, the dimension switch. Uh, and now we are good about the, 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 the handle phase. So after um, we uh, do the dimension switch, the next thing is we want to update the secret shares. So the basic idea in a one dimensional is because the only term uh, matters is the constant term, uh, then it is always good for us to add zero whole polynomial to our original polynomial. Uh, it will change the secret shares, but it will not change the constant term. Uh, so this is an example so the original uh, polynomial is x squared um, plus x plus 1. And uh, the proactive um, polynomial uh, is 3x squared plus 5x. And add them together, we get the updated polynomial. And you can see that uh, the constant does not change. Oh, sorry. <coughs> the constant does not change, but the secret share actually change. So. Um, yeah, so by adding zero whole polynomial, we are able to update the secret shares. Uh, but in chirp, because we use a bivariate polynomial, we need to extend this technique to a bivariate case. Uh, and uh, it's kind of uh, very intuitive. Uh, so there are two steps in the bivariate zero secret sharing. Uh, so first of all, you need to do a one-dimensional one zero secret sharing uh, along the y-axis. And uh, each of the node will get uh, its own secret share here. And then we do uh, Shamir secret sharing again on these secret shares. And uh, this will generate all the points on the grid, which means we are uh, good now because we have a bivariate polynomial whose constant is uh, 0. So. Uh, Actually, the last step of the handoff phase is that we need to switch back the dimension to the lower threshold secret sharing scheme. And uh, we are done in the handoff phase. Uh, however, we didn't talk about uh, the security of the handoff phase. What if there is some malicious party in the committee and uh, try to send some uh, incorrect share uh, to other uh, nodes to corrupt the whole protocol? So uh, our solution is to use commitment scheme and uh, some consensus protocol. And we actually, we use blockchain in the paper to uh, solve this problem. Uh, so the commitment scheme, uh, I think most of you are familiar with it, but let me introduce it. It's a cryptographic primitive that allows us one to commit to a chosen value, uh, but keeping it secret. Uh, and uh, uh, the people, uh, the person can review it later. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, we use a polynomial commitment scheme called KZG in Chirp, and it has a very good uh, commitment size complexity, which is 01 for uh, any degree polynomial. So uh, the high level idea of the solution is, uh, whenever you want to send a message to some other node, you always need to uh, submit a commitment on the blockchain. And uh, afterwards, if something uh, goes wrong, uh, then oh sorry, then everyone can uh, uh, verify the share and the commitment to see if you have sent a share that is different from your commitment. Uh, and uh, uh, people may ask that, what if uh, the commitment is committed to a wrong value? Uh, so um, the commitment in high level is. Uh, uh, is the secret to some uh, number. And uh, using the algebraic property of these things, we are able to verify some um, property of all the commitments on chain. Uh, for example, we are able to verify that all the commitments are committed to values that sum up to zero. So if you want to submit uh, wrong commitments, then you will also be caught because of this thing. 
Um, so if every verification goes fine, then we are in the optimistic path and everything runs good. But if some of the verification fails, then we will deviate to a pessimistic path. So there are two kinds of pessimistic paths in chirp. So if a normal verification fails, uh, then we are in pessimistic path A. And uh, our solution is uh, we will require the old committee to do the handoff phase again. But this time, uh, it, uh, besides the uh, commitment, you also need to submit a verifiable encryption of the message you send on chain. And with this thing, we are able to find exactly uh, which party is a malicious party and expel it and do the whole handoff phase again. And uh, recall that we use a commitment scheme called KZG in our protocol. Um, so KZG required a setup phase and the setup phase may fail. So if the setup phase fails, then the adversary may be able to uh, make up some uh, wrong value with the same commitment as uh, the correct value. So um, we also have a, a verification step for this kind of failure called the state verification. And if this verification fails, then we will deviate it to pessimistic pass B. And uh, uh, the solution we use to uh, solve this problem is just we will redo the uh, handoff phase, but do not use KZG commitment, but Patterson commitment uh, with some sacrifice in performance. Uh, so uh, here's a performance comparison with a state of art called the Schultz MPSS. So um, the on-chain complexity means how many bytes we put on the blockchain, and off-chain complexity means how many bytes we transfer in the P2P network. And uh, the threshold is a threshold of secret sharing scheme. Um, so we can see that compared to the optimistic path of MPSS, uh, the on-chain complexity is the same, but the off-chain complexity is uh, in, is improved to O n square. So uh, this improvement is due to two parts. The first one is we use KZG, which has uh, O one commitment size. Uh, well, MPSS use some O n uh, a commitment scheme. And uh, another reason is uh, we use bivariate polynomial and dimension switch to deal with uh, a handoff problem. Uh, so in MPSS, they use some blinding polynomial which requires them to generate a blinding polynomial for each of the node in the new committee, which will also increase a factor of O n in the total complexity. Uh, and we can also say that threshold of the optimistic pass of chirp is, ha uh, is a half of the committee size, while Schultz is uh, only able to uh, guarantee uh, one third of the committee size. Uh, and we can see that even the pessimistic pass um, we are no worse than the pessimistic paths of uh, shorts and PSS. So question, right? you did not add the, uh, the, the setup, uh, the communication assumption, the shoes protocol was defined for asynchronous communication, or at least partial synchronous communication setting. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. So, uh, the when they have this n third, one third, right, n by three. Oh, yeah, that's, that, but even in a synchronized uh, situation, they also have this threshold, right? But probably that's what? your version. I don't think that paper has synchronized version. Right? Oh, okay. Uh, I see. Yeah, so our, commitment, uh, uh, so our statement here is that uh, if we apply uh, the MPSS in the synchronized version, it still has uh, uh, this kind of threshold. Uh, and uh, you need some modification to change it to uh, half of the community size. So uh, in this scenario, we are better than them, but in a synchronized uh, version, I'm not sure if we can still achieve half of the community size. Uh, maybe we will be able to. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, and uh, last, I want to talk a little bit about the implementation evaluation. Uh, <laughs> So we implement chirping around 2,000 uh, lines of Go code, and we run uh, the protocol on 100 EC2 instances. Um, we run in two scenarios. Uh, the LAN setting, we start all the instances in one data center, and in one setting, we start the instances across the world. 
so the difference is in one setting we can see the uh, influence of the network delay, while in the LAN setting we will more focus on the computation cost. Um, so, yeah, our first experiment measures uh, uh, off-chain communication cost, and we can see uh, it perfectly um, uh, conforms with the theoretical analysis. Uh, the short MPSS has ON for uh, uh, ON to four complexity, and our has uh, ON to uh, two complexity. So, what blockchain do you assume there? Like, because you have blockchain, how much time within how much time your things will be agreed on blockchain for your numbers? Oh, so just how many bytes you put? Uh, so this is uh, the so off-chain complex. Ethereum, then there'll be something that go to blockchain, right? Oh yeah. So the complexity uh, on blockchain is the same. Okay. But this, is, this is this is Schulz assuming blockchain-based construction. Oh yeah. So Schulz assumes there's some uh, consensus protocol, right? And we uh, plug blo blockchain in there. And we use CRM in the evaluation. Yeah. And so actually, we achieve like 2,000 times uh, improvement on the off chain cost. And uh, we also uh, measure the latency of the two protocols. And we can see that um, in the one setting, our protocol only takes five seconds to uh, finish in, the, uh, in 100 nodes. Well, a uh, short time PSS um, takes up to uh, 12 seconds in only LAN setting, which means uh, our protocol is actually more fast than short time PSS. Okay, so uh, here are some uh, important points I want to repeat at the end of the talk. So the CHIRP is a churn robust proactive secret sharing protocol. So by churn robust, we actually mean that we can also change the size of committee. I didn't cover that part in the talk, but actually we can do that. And uh, um, the biggest improvement of Chirp is it achieves much better asymptotic communication cost. And we implement Chirp, and uh, in practice, it also performs good. Uh, OK, so that's everything for this talk. And if you have any questions, please, uh, you can see our paper at CCS this year, or visit our website, or send me an email. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. So the uh, chain. Uh, I have a, a really, you know, uh, not technical question. Okay. Is is this kind of protocol actually used anywhere in the world at the moment? Oh yeah. So um, <laughs> there was starting. <laughs> I love this question. Yeah. So um, yeah, we are seeking for real world deployment opportunity for this protocol, and there is a startup uh, of blockchain in San Francisco called Oasis Lab. Uh, and uh, actually, they are trying to implement this protocol in their blockchain system. I'm an internship there uh, this summer, and I implement the initial version for them. And I think the engineer team will continue to work on that and integrate it in their real system. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, GP Morgan is also trying to find out any opportunity if this is possible to use in their system, but I'm not sure. So some people are thinking of using it. But yeah, because this paper just come out. And, uh, Forgive me if this is a naive question, because I'm almost sure I missed something. But how did you come up with 2,000 times better? Because you showed that Schultz was taking like 12 seconds, and oh, no. uh, is taking like 5 seconds. Yeah, that, that's a good. Maybe I uh, confused a little bit in that part. So the 2000 uh, performance boost is on the off-chain communication cost. So uh, remember the theoretical complexity of ON24 and ON22. So uh, I think MPSS, they, in one hand of this, they need to transfer about 5 gigabytes in the P2P network. And our protocol only needs to transfer like several uh, megabytes. Oh, OK. So, yeah, so that's where the, the performance boost comes from. So, so was it the same idea, or is it different? <laughs> so it's different. So first of all, we also have a proactive solution. Uh -huh. I mentioned it yesterday. But of course, it described different things. So. Okay. okay. But I, I, you should have been able to describe it. <laughs> 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 <la
concerned. No, sorry, because I'm too naive a listener, and I try hard. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Okay.